now my pleasure to welcome Jason Ward from Soul Gold. Uh, Jason, thank you for your time and over to you to speak. Yeah, thank you everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for um, hosting this. It's a fantastic um, opportunity to give an update on what Soul Gold's up to. Um, Soul Gold have long been interested in the pursuit of uh, porphyries. We've been uh, riding this wave for some time. We started off in the Solomon Islands looking for porphyry deposits there. We found some deposits, uh, but they weren't weren't quite economic or weren't quite rich enough, and it had some uh, very difficult logistics. In 2012, we made the move to go from the South uh, West Pacific to Ecuador, to the Andes, and uh, there we have our first discovery there. We earned into a company called ENSA, Explorations Nova Mining, which held the um, Cascabel project. Um, Solgold earned in uh, 50, uh, 85% share in ENSA, uh, the remaining 15% is held by Cornerstone. Our first discovery uh, is quite well known now. It's, it holds uh, 21.7 million ounces of gold as a byproduct to its uh, almost 10 million tons of copper. So as you can see by the um, resource table there, most of that is in the measured and indicated category now. And there's also a very high grade core. It's high grade and gold rich. So this discovery, has, uh, there's been many discoverers in this. I'd like to give acknowledgement to some of them. Um, Bruce Rorlach, who, who led the team from day one when Solgold signed the agreement uh, with Cornerstone. Uh, Steve Garwin, who came in in 2014, along with Ben Whistler, that put all this together. Uh, Jose Silva and Bayardo Rosero were there in the early days with me uh, when Bruce was sending us coordinates uh, from Brisbane office and Melbourne office to our Peg Hole One and other, other projects. So yeah, thanks to those guys. Uh, it's been taken in the hands of Santiago Barker and Alfredo Cruz since then. Our two project managers who are doing a fantastic job. Jason, and, um, sorry to interrupt mate. We cannot see your screen. If you're screen sharing, we can't see your screen. Okay, I am screen sharing. Uh, sorry about that. Let me see what I've got to escape. Okay. Well, oh, sorry about that. I was uh, I wasn't looking at much other than this uh, resource uh, estimate. This is MRE three. So we're currently um, undergoing PFS studies. Uh, the the PEA showed a very economic ore body with uh, a lot of upfront um, uh, capital. The first 20 to 25 years mine life was very profitable, and then we had a 55 year mine life. Um, this project is now in the hands of the engineers, which is a good place for an exploration geologist to, to put these projects. So we're completing the uh, pre-feasibility study, looking at the most economical way to extract most of this resource. Uh, it will be a block cave underground development. It's quite deep, but the geometry lends itself well to a block cave development. So yeah, about almost 22 million ounces of gold, about 10 million tons of copper, and about 92 million ounces of silver there as well. So that's a very good start. But um, Sol Gold, it, when we came to Ecuador, we obviously saw the potential that there's a much wider, wider project. Um, our, our project is not Cascabel, our project is Ecuador. Uh, we see all these under underexplored um, belts. There's the the Miocene belt, um, the Eocene belt, and the Jurassic belt, very underexplored. So if we take the size of Ecuador and plonk it on northern Chile there, that would cover about 25% uh, of the world's copper production. So it's a sizable country and it has very large uh, undeveloped and underexplored chunks of these uh, metallogenic belts. So. Within Chile, of course, there's much bigger deposits than Alpala, where we're talking about 10 million uh, tons of copper, you know, Escondida and things like that, maybe five times bigger, 50 million tons or so, maybe bigger than that. So we envisage that in Ecuador as well, there exists a high probability, a good chance to find something much bigger. Hence, uh, in 2015, Solgold initiated a very aggressive uh, um, project generation, uh, uh, exercise where we looked at right across the country. We looked at things uh, such as Greg was talking about earlier, um, uh, faults um, with topographical gradients where you see zones of uplift, 
um, pull apart basins and things like that, jobs within faults. And we pegged 75 projects right across the country. 76, sorry, at the moment. So that's about 3,200 square kilometres. Um, so we're applying the same blueprint across all of those to rapidly explore them. Our blueprint starts with social engagement. There's nothing more important uh, to, to when you're getting on the ground in a new mining uh, regime such as Ecuador. So our social and community engagement is uh, paramount to what we do there. So I'm gonna talk about some of these projects today. Uh, this is a porphyry conference, so I'll focus on what, what I think are some of the best porphyry targets. Uh, we have so many of them, there's so much to discover, so um, I won't get through all of them today. Starting with Porvenir. Porvenir is located in the southern uh, Jurassic Belt of Ecuador, this Jurassic Belt out in the east, which extends through Mirador, Fruta del Norte, uh, Warinza, and other projects down there. Uh, it's a very steep country, so we, we initiated with a ridge and spur sampling program, um, and we got very good copper anomalism there. You can see that that's over 500 ppm copper there in magenta. So we found a big, um, not sure if you can see my cursor there, can you, Simon? But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you where the uh, Bartolo down there in the south. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, up in the north central here is what we previously referred to as target 15 and target 16, just east of that. Target 15 uh, at Cachafosa Creek is where we commenced the first drilling. Here it is here. This is uh, copper over zinc. We like to use a lot of geochemical ratios to vector into the center of the ore body. So copper over zinc shows Bartolo, a target down here in the south, new target, target 15, as well as uh, 16. Uh, this is a cluster of porphyries, uh, as, as uh, many porphyries, they're not one single um, a deposit, they're a cluster of deposits. So the first one we started drilling was here, target 15. Here's the copper geochemic chemistry. And here's gold. It's a very gold rich system, which is another reason we like it. Molybdenum is uh, one of the best indicators for uh, porphyry and also molybdenum over manganese. Um, low manganese shows alteration zones. So it's a very useful uh, data set. Uh, rock chips uh, and geo, uh, geological mapping though is our best tool. So our rock chip samples here, 147.8 meters at 0.69% copper equivalent. And that showed strong gold that was about one to one, one ppm to one uh, percent copper. So very similar to Alpala Cascabel in some copper and gold ratios. So that's where we drilled our first drill hole, PDH uh, 001. And that was drilled at an angle of 55 degrees. You can see it there over several images. Uh, the magnetics shows a classic uh, bullseye target with a zone of magnetite uh, depletion around a central high. Um, moly, manganese, copper, gold, and copper over zinc there in the, uh, in the uh, images to the bottom. So drill hole one was very successful. Uh, we encountered copper mineralization from about 15 meters down right to the end of the hole. So that was visible chalcopyrite. We don't have assays yet, and I, I don't want to speculate what the grades might be, but we did see some zones uh, richer than others with up to 6% per volume chalcopyrite. But what was important and interesting was the multi phases of uh, intrusives recognized, the veining, and uh, its classic porphyry signature. So I'm gonna go through and look at some uh, core photos now. Um, we're going through the length of the hole. So from 26 meters there, we see chalcopyrite appearing. These rocks are more fell, are more um, potassium rich than the porphyry at Alpala. So it's uh, uh, what you see here, the pink mineral, there are some um, K-spar, potassium feldspar, but also there's albite with a uh, hematite dusting. There's B veins here. The black mineral here at 138 meters, that's tourmaline. So tourmaline in the edge of a B vein with a chalcopyrite there. Moving down the hole, you can see quite a lot of chalcopyrite, quite a lot of veining. There's multiple vein stages, a lot of cross cutting. 
some big chunky sea veins, um, which uh, Greg showed in his presentation. Um, so those at 306 meters there, that's basically a chunk of uh, sea, gray, sea vein in some broken core. And um, as we get deeper, it starts to get a bit richer looking, more silica, more chalcopyrite, um, moving through um, intermediate argillic alteration, which is sericite and chlorite. Uh, there's zones of um, propylitic with some potassic alteration. And down here deeper, uh, we put a press release out yesterday. So yeah, we can show these right to the end of the hole. The veining gets quite intense. And uh, this is something similar to what we'd see at, at Alpala here at uh, 607, 617 metres. Um, there's some more veining right down to the end of the hole, 882. So for me, this is a discovery hole. We don't have assays yet, but we're very confident with the amount of chalcopyrite we can see in this. We know we're high in the system, hence, um, the next hole, as I had on my planned holes here, the next hole will be drilled from the same pad at a steeper angle to get down deeper. And then we have many holes uh, planned. We're bringing in six more drill rigs. Um, like everything Sol Gold does, we don't do it half-heartedly. Uh, we're, we're attacking very aggressively. Uh, in the early days, when we discovered Alpala, not many companies in the world were even drilling, let alone drilling 1.5 kilometer discovery holes. 1.5 kilometer holes we were drilling at Alpala there. So finding it deeper. Uh, I'll go on to another project, Rio Amarillo. That's located in the north of Ecuador uh, at the, near the junction of the Eocene and Miocene belts. We're not exactly sure yet of the age of the intrusives. Both the Eocene and Miocene are close together here. It's about 30 kilometers to the south east of Cascabel. Uh, there's a litho cap. There's a uh, molybdenum contours there, so very good molybdenum numbers, over 100 uh, ppm. Oh, sorry, that's molybdenum, that's moly over um, manganese, sorry, so over 100. Uh, this is the top of the litho cap there in the photo. The rock is very altered and cooked up. There's breccias, mineralized breccias like this with over a gram per tonne gold in them. Here's an interesting figure. This is uh, Alpala to the, to the right and Rio Amarillo to the left. Uh, the molybdenum's plotted up at the same, uh, same ranges, and so are the, so are the, uh, yeah, the litho cap there. So these are at the same scale. So we're looking at something similar size to Alpala, just that, um, that one, one uh, porphyry in Rio Amarillo. Again, it's a cluster of porphyries. There's three separate porphyries there. Cisne Loja down in the south. We originally started exploring this as an epithermal target. Uh, we got some good numbers here, up to 15 grams, a lot of uh, epithermal targets there. But as we uh, went further and completed our soil sampling, we found good molybdenum numbers down here, copper numbers, and uh, porphyry style mineralization down here at Salen. And there's some of the rocks there. There's some. Um, some secondary, some super gene enrichment there. So some very high numbers. Um, this is a very interesting target, which we want to be drilling soon as well. Sharug, down in the south, again on the Miocene belt. Uh, we, well, the first uh, thing we found here were tourmaline breaches, which were very well mineralized. But doing some geophysics there, there's another bullseye target that has very good geochem over it as well. And you can see an outcrop stockwork veining there. So there's D veins as well as C veins. So another target which we want to get drill rigs into as soon as possible. Um, I'm obviously not going to get through our 75 projects. I'm, I'm hitting you with a couple of them. Here's Loweka. We're drilling there at the moment. There's six targets within Loweka. We've drilled two holes into target six. Um, we haven't released any results here yet, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but another interesting target with a lot of potential, six separate porphyries identified so far in that cluster. Yes, and I think that's, uh, that's enough for today. I've, uh, I, will, um, I will be able to answer any questions lately. The most important thing is that our project is Ecuador. Uh, we're the biggest grant landholder in Ecuador. We have 86 geologists on the ground. I believe that's one of the biggest exploration teams in the world looking for copper. 
and um, we expect to make more discoveries. Many thanks, Jason. Very interesting. Um, uh, we've got some questions for you uh, into the Q&A. Uh,